I'm going to show you a very recent design, and it's probably one of the easiest hats that you'll ever make. I call it the wildling baby hat. Why? Because it's got little faux animal ears, and believe it or not, this is just a one-piece pattern, which is amazing. You can make it with a bow, or you can make it without. Either way, it's just an absolutely wonderful little hat, tried and tested by my own little granddaughter, Rosie. Let's get started. Let's make ourselves a little wildling baby beanie for the special little ones in our lives. Or you can actually make this as part of your business. Either way, this is going to be a fun little project. As you can well imagine, with all of the hats that I've made in my 36 year career, it's very rare for my family who gets lots of hats for me to actually say, hey, I think this one may be my favorite. But that's what my daughter-in-law told me last week, little Rosie's mom. She loves this hat. So let's share it with you so that everyone in your family can love it too. What you need for this project is fabric that stretches. So a knit fabric that stretches well in at least one direction and try to pick the direction that goes from side to side because that really is the true knit. Um, I get my fabric from spoonflower.com and this is called Modern Jersey Knit. The pattern begins as a rectangle with a length of 19 inches or 48 centimeters and a and a depth of four and a half inches by 11 and a half centimeters and actually i think i have that turned around because this is the part that's going to be the stretchy part uh, we have a dip that's in the middle we're going to cut a little dip out of the center on one side uh, so mark a halfway point in the pattern, which would be nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters from one end into the middle. And you want to sort of mark two and a half inches on either side of that middle. So five inches. And you're going to um, cut down three centimeters or 1.25 inches from the middle and make a dip. So I think it's pretty self-explanatory uh, you sort of round the the middle part the dip a bit just because you're going to sew this this is this is the part of the hat that is going to create the ears so this is at the top of the head and here is my pattern piece so I think you can see what you're supposed to do and actually you can experiment with this dip I find that this measurement creates the best ears um, you get sort of a rounded shape all the way around the head as it pulls the fabric in to make the ears. But if you cut this deeper, you're going to get more defined ears. But you can experiment and see how you like it once you sort of get the hang of it. So I'm going to leave that up for a minute so that you can make note and cut that out. All right, so now I'm going to put my pattern piece on the fabric and show you how this is cut out. This is the stretchy side. So I'm going to just fold over a piece. So I'm going to have right sides together. And I'm just going to turn it around because then it's easier for me to work on. So the stretch is going this way. And now I can mark around my pattern piece and cut it out. And that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now that my pattern is cut out, I'm going to sew a long seam from one end here all the way around through that corner and to the other end. All right, seam done. And now I'm going to top stitch on either side of the ditch so that this seam lays perfectly flat and there'll be a top stitching line on the outside. And I'm going to do that right now. All right, now I've top stitched that seam flat and look what happens. I'm going to 
show you, you can see now the outline of our hat and the deep cuff here. Now I'm going to sew this together at the sides, right sides together, of course. And I'll start at the bottom and sew right up to the top of the ear. Oh, and by the way, I'm taking about a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. So let me pin that and sew it. So there's my side sewn. I'm gonna top stitch as much as I can up the side on both sides. And then I'm gonna go up almost to where the ear starts, sew across, and then come back down on the other side. And when you sew these four seams, well, actually three seams, the one down the middle and the, the two at the sides, don't forget to back tack at the top and the bottom of your seam. Leave the needle in when you make that turn. Needle in, turn again, and back down the other side. Now we're gonna do the same on the other side. Nice and top stitched. We've sewn all the seams down nice and flat now. There's really not a front and back, especially if it's not going to have a bow. If you're gonna have a bow, then the bow would go on the front so it doesn't interfere with the comfort for the baby because at this age, they're mostly lying on their back. So let's decide how deep we're gonna turn this up. What kind of hem are we gonna make? And the hem is actually gonna be the cuff, the inside of the cuff in case the edge gets turned up because the baby has lots of room to grow into it. Um, I usually make mine about six and a half inches, the ones that I sell. So um, as you can see there, from the top of the ear to the hem, it's six and a half inches. But by all means, you decide if you want a deeper cuff, then you're gonna add maybe some more to each end of your pattern piece. Another inch on each side would give you quite a nice deep cuff. But I find by the time they grow out of this circumference, which stretches quite a bit, it stretches really to 16, 16 and a half, 17 inches. But by the time they grow out of that, they would, they would need a, a deeper hat and a bigger pattern, which you can draft up. The great thing too about working with this knit fabric is that it doesn't fray. So if you don't have a serger, you really don't have to worry about finishing the end. You can just cut off the ends of the thread. If you really wanted to, you could do some sort of a decorative overcast stitch if you have that on your regular sewing machine. If you have a serger like I do, then by all means, that would be very nice just to serge all along the edge. It's gonna be on the inside, but it just makes it look very, very much more professional. But you don't need to worry about knit fabric fraying, which makes it perfect for this kind of a project. Now we're going to turn up the hem at the bottom. And I'm going to do that by actually turning up the hem and pinning it. But to hold it in place, rather than going around the circumference of the hat, I'm just gonna sew up in the ditch of those four seams that I did the top stitching and I'm gonna sew right in the middle and try to line up the piece underneath so that when I sew, I'm gonna sew in the same place on both sides. If you have a decorative stitch on your sewing machine, by all means, you could do two lines or one line up here with a, an elastic stitch, something that will stretch, but I'm gonna do the regular sewing machine method of putting a hem on this hat 
and it will never come out because it's going to be more than tacked down. It's going to be sewn down in those four places, which means that we can turn up the cuff and the hat will still be stretchy. Now I do have several pieces of sewing equipment here in my studio. So some of the hats that I have made, I have put a decorative stitch at the edge of the cuff or just up from the edge. So when it's turned up, it looks pretty. It's up to you. You don't need to do that. This one doesn't have it and it's just fine. And if you love the way that this project is turning out, make sure you check out my other video on the cute baby beanies. So I have this with a knot top and the bow in one video. There's the bow. This is the bow pattern, four inches or 10 centimeters here in this direction, four and a half inches or 11.5 centimeters here and it's folded over. And I have a video about how I do the center. I just sew straight down the middle of the bow, leaving two long ends of thread. And I just wrap. It's such an easy way to gather a bow. All right, I do have a video about how I make bows. So I'll put a link here and you can watch that. Now I'm going to put together the other hat one directional pattern, an obvious pattern, and a lot of knits will have an obvious pattern. This one has construction trucks. So what I needed to do, I'm going to show you next. Now, if you choose a print that has an obvious direction, you're going to have to modify the top of the hat. So here's my stretchy direction. So what I would do is I'm going to fold my pattern piece in half. And instead of cutting one piece of two, I'm going to cut two pieces. So I'll have a, I'll have four pieces like that. I'll leave a little extra at the top for my seam allowance. So here's how I handled cutting out this hat with fabric that has a print going in one obvious direction. So I'll just do top stitching to make sure that these seams lie flat, just like all of my other seams are going to have top stitching. And I can treat it just the same way that I treated the other hat that I cut without the seam at the top. So how about that? This one turned out perfect just has an extra seam at the top to join those two pieces that are going in the same direction. Whereas this print, you can just go right around the top of the head and all the way down to the other side of the hem. Voila, there we have it, our wildlings hat. Ta-da. Thank you for joining me today in the studio here at Madcap Hats in beautiful Eastern Ontario, Canada. I really hope you enjoyed this project. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I will answer each and every one of you. In the meantime, if you like this project and like the other things that you've seen from my channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps me. It gives me support to keep going. I have lots and lots of patterns to share with you. I've had a 36 year career designing hats for my own company, which is www.madcaphats.com and other hat companies as well. And also I have never mentioned this before, but some of these projects that we make, including the little wildling hat, they are available on our website. So if you don't feel like actually making one yourself, you can always buy one from me. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week with a new project. In the meantime, happy sewing. Bye.